Hey, it's Miss Mocha. I'm back with some more spiritual therapy. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'm still talking about the children of Israel. Now, tonight, I'll talk about the story behind them in the wilderness. So I'll do a few videos on that, maybe a part one, part two, and part three. Um, if you recall before, my previous videos were about the children of Israel and the story behind them in Egypt and how the Lord brought them out of Egypt and out of the Egyptians' um, slavery. And so they ended up in the wilderness and they were supposed to journey with Moses. Moses led them out of Egypt and they were supposed to only have a three-day journey from Egypt into the wilderness to the land that God promised them. But because of the way the um, children of Israel were acting, God had them spend 40 years in the wilderness to get their minds right. And so I'm kind of doing a history of them in the wilderness and um, how they acted, how their relationship was with God, how God felt, how Moses felt, how the children of Israel felt. And so just a little history and background on their time in the wilderness. And so um, this starts at chapter 17, and I'm going to call it the story behind the children of Israel in the wilderness. So this is part one. And um, before my last video, I left off with chapter 16. And that they were leaving Egypt, God had destroyed the Egyptians, and they were just now getting into the wilderness, and already the children of Israel were complaining. They were complaining to uh, Moses, which was like complaining to God that they didn't have food to eat. So they thought, first they thought that God and Moses had brought them out to the wilderness or out of Egypt so that the um, Egyptians can catch them and kill them. So they were scared then and they had so much fear. They didn't believe, they didn't trust. And so God was like, you know, tell them to chill. I got it. So he destroyed the Egyptians. Then they start complaining, getting scared because there was not enough food left. They had ate all the bread that they had took out of Egypt. And so God again told Moses, don't trip. I got y'all, you know. I'm going to send, and that's when he sent the quails and the manna, the birds brought the bread for meat for them to eat. And so now they're still in the wilderness and now they're complaining to Moses, starting with chapter 17 of Exodus, of course, that they don't have enough water. And so they need water to drink. And so they, they're complaining against Moses, you know, saying things like, Moses, why would you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And, you know, Moses is like, well, why are you coming at me? You're really coming at God. You're tempting him. Um, he, You know, the Lord hears you. And so I'm, I think I'm going to just read the notes that I wrote. If I get off track, it's probably because I summed it up enough in my head. So I, I feel like I can freestyle it. But for the most part, I read the notes that I took. So. Yes, this is chapter 17, where they're pretty much tempting God, um, coming at Moses like, you know, we need water, we're thirsty, our kids need water, our cattle needs water, where's the water, we in this dry desert, you know, and I feel them, that's scary and stuff, but they didn't have trust, and so... They were um, coming at Moses, coming at God from a place of doubt, fear, all those emotions because, you know, they didn't know no better. And so, um, let's see. Okay, and so Moses went crying to God like, you know, what should he do with these people? They're so mad at him that they're ready to kill him because they're thirsty. And so what God did is he sent them to a specific place where um, he can have Moses turn um, you know, use his rod and stuff to do the miracles. And so the Lord made water come out of a rock so that the people could drink. So even after they tempted the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not, God still provided water for them. And so next it talked about how they got to, I feel like it was another city and they were attacked by a tribe called the Amalekites or Amalek, I think it is. And so the Amalekites were like their arch enemy or rival. And so they came to fight against the children of Israel. I'll call them the Israelites because <laughs> the children of Israel gets long. Okay. So, yeah, they came to fight in one of the cities that they were in and Joshua had came up. So I'm not sure 
where exactly he came from. It didn't say it just spoke his name. So he got to be one of the children of Israel. So he was with them and he was able to dis disable the Amalekites and their people with his sword and he defeated them. And so the Lord had swore to have war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. So, um, cause you know, Moses was older now, so he couldn't really do all this fighting, but it did say in the Bible how Moses would lift up his sword. He went to, like to the top of the mountain, lifted up his sword and the children of Israel would win, you know, would be winning over them. And then if he dropped the sword down or the rod down, then um, the uh, Amalekites would be winning. So they had to go help him. I believe it was Aaron and some others had to help him keep his arms up so that he could lift his sword or lift his rod up so that the children of Israel could triumph over the Amalekites. And Joshua did. He ended up defeating them. So that is, you know, the first little part of their journey in the wilderness. And so... Chapter 18 talks about after they got through all of that, Moses' father-in-law and his family came to visit him. And so Moses' father-in-law brought his daughter, which was Moses' wife, and their children because they had heard all the good things that was happening with Moses and how he led the people out of Egypt. And so he caught up with them, and um, Moses, you know, was so happy. He talked with him and sat down. They ate together. Um, the elders ate with them, Aaron, um, and he told him how much God had did for them, had given him power and so all that and how he got led him out of the out of Egypt. He told him all the story, you know. And so you know how it is when something good happens, you wanna talk about it and stuff. So that's what Moses did. And so then Moses the next day, I believe, Moses from morning to evening, he had to go judge the people. And so Moses' father-in-law saw it, and he said that it wasn't good for Moses. And so he gave Moses some advice. And it was like he was saying that Moses was taking on too much of a burden with the people, doing everything and wearing himself out, like doing too much work, just being, you know, the mediator between the people, all their issues, and bringing it back to God, you know, um, and handling everything. So being like a real judge over everything. And so... Um, his father-in-law had told him to teach the children of Israel the ordinances, the laws, and show them the way that they must walk and the work that they must do. So teach them how to do the work and um, be like God's representative and bring their issues to him. But he said also to choose men from the children of Israel who were God-fearing men of truth um, who hated dishonest gain, you know, and ha and didn't have like jealousy, envy, or any of that, and have them be rulers over the the Israelites. So rulers over the thousands, the hundreds, the fifty, the tens of them. Have them be the judges over the people at all times. So that would give um, Moses a little break, so that. They would judge like the small matters among the people and Moses would judge the great matters so that they can help him out and bear some of the burden with him. And so Moses listened to it, thought it was a good idea. And as long as God approved of it, you know, it was OK. So he did it and he, you know, made them like rulers or kings or men of honor, whatever you want to call it, so that they can help out with some of the responsibilities of what was going on with the people. And um, in between, you know, those issues and matters and bringing it to God, what really needs to go to God and what they can handle themselves. Okay, so that was chapter 19 or 18, I mean. <laughs> now, chapter 19 talks about them coming to the wilderness the, of Sinai, the desert. And so um, they camped before the mountain. So Mount Sinai, a mountain in the desert, I guess. So Moses went up to the mountain, he spoke to the Lord, and the Lord told Moses to tell the children of Israel, if you will obey my voice and my word and keep my covenant, then he will make them a peculiar treasure to him above all people, and they would be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. So Moses told the elders, and the elders told the rest of the people, and the people agreed to do all that the Lord had spoken, and so Moses went back and told the Lord that they agreed. And so, 
okay. So that was God, you know, telling them that they would need to obey him and keep the covenant with him so that they could be his chosen people. There's going to be rules and regulations that come with it, but they were his peculiar or special treasure above all. And so God came actually in a thick cloud at the mountain to reveal his voice to the children of Israel, not himself, his voice so that they could hear him when he spoke and believe it forever. And so, um, he told Moses and Moses warned the people that they were not to go up to the mountaintop to try and see him because if they did, God would take their lives. And that was just that you, they were not to see God. Only Moses was called to the top to see God or whoever God chose to. And right now it was just Moses. So if they wanted to keep their lives, they needed to obey God and listen to his voice and do what he said. If he said they couldn't come see him, then they couldn't go see him. And so Moses went back and told them that. And then the people heard him, though. They could only hear his voice. And he said um, Aaron could come up, but not the rest of the people. So that's where I'm going to stop with part one, that they got to mount the mountain Sinai and they heard God's voice. So God had something to say because he was choosing them as a, a special nation and he needed to provide them with his rules, his regulations, his guidelines, his laws. Okay, so they are ready to listen. So that is part one. Thank you for listening. I'm gonna come back with part two, the story behind the children of Israel in the wilderness.